Hi, Devon Wolf from Mystical Drumming, mysticaldrumming.com. The drag. The drag is not a drag. The drag is a beautiful thing. In Italian, una cosa bella for you guys to speak Italian. Okay, so the drag is simply two ghost notes followed by an accent. What's a ghost note? Well, they play a little bit of a beat for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's say, ghost note in between the punch notes, which would be on two and four. Generally, a snare drum punch note is on two and four. So most music is kind of one and two and three and four and one. noting and then accenting on the two and four, right? So Alright, so what was going on there? So really it's just triplets, right? One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, two Alright, so we're just ghosting. ghost note is not a note. It's it's a hint. It's a little touch. Okay, so the stick when playing a ghost note, very important. This is the pad. When a lot of um, people play ghost notes, they raise up to play their ghost note. No. If you play a note here, note, right? You then drop to play your, your ghost note. So it's note, it will be note, 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 and it comes back to level, then you drop down to ghost note. You don't raise to go to ghost. Why would you do that? Because if you're here, okay, here, yes, for a regular note, you're going to raise a little bit. For an accent, more. For a hard accent, all the way. For a ghost note, though, we want to just touch, right? So it's not going to be, let's say if we are ghost noting on three. So one, two, not up three. So it's not raise one, raise two, raise three, raise four. If the three is just a ghost note, it's going to drop instead of raise. So one, two, drop, three, four. So raise one, raise two drop, three, raise four, okay? So it's a little, little touch. It's not, I hope you can hear that. Uh, the electronic drums, um, we're not directly wired into the camera yet. We'll get that worked out, but for now, I hope you can hear the differentiation between a regular note and a ghost note, okay? Uh, okay, so with the drag, we have this double, double ghost. So it's not just one ghost note with an accent, it's two ghost notes with an accent, right? So if you're doing it very slow, if you're just learning this, it's ghost, ghost, hard. And when you're learning things, learn it slow. Or if you're relearning this stuff, if you're doing it from the beginning, which what you should be doing, as you're following this mystical drumming system, it doesn't matter if you play 40 years. Drop the ego, the pride goes outside for now, okay? Uh, please come here with an empty cup so that your cup can be filled. It's an old Zen cone. There's great truth to that, okay? This is an ego-free zone. Okay, 
right? So it's going back to the beginning to learn, to relearn. It doesn't literally mean go back to the beginning, but it means restructuring how you play it because if you've been playing incorrectly, you've been learning incorrectly. It's very important, okay? Okay, so we, let's say we're doing a right drag. It means that the right stick is our accent stick. So it's ghost, ghost, accent. Or a left drag would be ghost, ghost, accent. Okay? The accent is not, should not be your hand or your arm hitting. You feel, and it sounds bad. It feels bad and sounds bad. It's a whipping motion. Your body should be dropped. Your arms should be at your side, not pushed at side. You take your arms up in the air and you drop them. Literally drop them. Your shoulders, drop. Don't slouch forward. Be straight, but totally relaxed. You could go to sleep like this, and that's the idea. Feel like you're about to go to sleep. Totally relax. There's no tension in the hands. We want tension-free hands. Your legs should be dropped, so your pedals are totally loose. So, meaning your feet. Your feet are totally loose to play loose pedals. Okay? Okay, so in this loose position, the ghost is here, right? And then, if we started the accent from down here, it would be whip up and through. So it's like a wave. And snap. So goes, snap. It's one motion like a wave. We call it the cobra in this mystical drumming system. Think of how a cobra moves. Watch it. YouTube it. Hopefully there's a slow motion cobra somewhere. I'm sure somebody slowed it down how the thing moves. It comes back and struts a lion does not go like this usually. It coils back and snaps out. The wave of an ocean, right? You see how it kind of like coils and unfolds, okay? That's where power comes from. The martial arts, which is what this is, I incorporated martial arts, which is the understanding of ancient wisdom of uh, movement of the body into drumming, plus incorporating elements, uh, strategies, techniques of the mind, such as NLP which stands for Neurolinguistic Programming. Ah, sorry, it's late. Uh, yeah, getting stuff out of your mouth is difficult. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the accent comes here. Okay? Now, if you're already up here, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, we get still straightened out, then the accent is not push. It's not arm push. It's not hand push. It's not wrist push. It's that feeling, put the stick in the webbing between the index finger and thumb, and just let it rip. It's kind of like whap, 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 okay. whap, whap, whap. Your mouth should make sounds when you're drumming. So it's an accent on one. one. your body to punch out, okay? Just like if you are in martial arts, you know, huh! you, when you unload and you uncoil your, your core, your hip, your, your, your thigh, and your shoulder, the last thing goes your arm. So, huh! okay, to create maximum power. Or if you're boxing, that kind of thing. Same thing with your foot if you're kicking out, okay? And you're also a part of your brain that is um, helping you to speak is now helping the other part of your brain, which is learning the synaptic route to burn. This is what we are. We are walking uh, synaptic burnt uh, and body burnt mind muscle memory machines, basically. Okay? Us drums. And all musicians. Okay, so do it slowly. If anything needs to be learned, do it slowly at first. So, two little ghost notes. Tap, tap, very lightly. Tap, tap, snap. Tap, tap, snap. Tap, tap, snap. Tap, tap, snap. Or we'll up here. Tap, tap, snap. Tap, tap, snap. 
okay, where should your six be? If both six, six are down here, let's say we're going to do a left flam. Okay, it isn't, okay, what you do is you would drop, remember, drop, don't raise, drop to your two ghost notes, and this stick raises in a wave-like motion. It's one motion. It comes up, circles, and comes down. So, down. Same thing with the right flam now. I'm sorry, right drag. Okay, if I've been calling drags flams, I apologize. I mean drags this whole video. Uh, I do get them verbally confused sometimes. Okay, so it's the left, right drag. So it's da da. Okay. Now your hand could be up here, right? Let's say, well, we'll get to that in a minute. So let's say it is up here. Your right stick is up. So still, it's drop to left ghost with your right hand snapping down, either staying down or coming back up, depending on what's happening next. If you ever watch good pool players, or you're a good pool player, you know you're setting up your next shot, right? So bad pool players, uh, or let's say a better, more positive word, people who don't play pool as well as they could, the reason they get beat generally by better players is not only because they don't sink the balls as much, it's the guys who know what they're doing when they start off. Once the balls are separated from the first shot, if they're, they're, if they're going, they're, uh, they know generally where they're going to go the whole, through the whole rack. So they know to go from here to there to there to there, meaning the white ball, when it's hit, it sinks the ball and it purposely is put somewhere else. Now, I'm not a great pool player, but I just know how this works with pool playing. Okay? So we're the same way. Okay? So we want to make sure if a hand is up for a reason. If we're playing a drag and my hand is up here and there's no reason for it, it shouldn't be up here. So if I do a drag on one, okay, so a drag played faster, how it really should sound, is more... It's that... It's the that, that, that. It's just a little spice before the stroke. Right? It's an imperceptible, kind of like, what is that? Like, what is that? It's, um, it's not a regular note, it's... Right? It's like adding spice to that soup. We just can't figure quite what it is, but it makes it different. Right? So, the flam sped up, it's very tight which you may have to practice doing. If you're not good at this, that's fine. Okay, so sped up. Okay, speed it up on toms. All right, so if I'm playing drag on yeah, if I said flam, I meant drag. I'm not sure if I did it. Okay. I, I mean drag through this whole thing. If um, the drag is on one, let's say, right? So we'd have, now we have to do an upstroke. Though sometimes an upstroke will involve hitting the drum and then raising. Well, as an upstroke just means you have to get your hand up here. Or, in this case, what we're calling it as a cobra, it's raising, it's coming down. So, flam, that would be one. Interestingly, what's happening here as well is that the left hand is playing a note, four, right? That after four, four, so it's going to raise, hit the pad, and come back up. Remember what I said before, don't raise again to get your ghost notes to be the prelude to the right hand accent one because there's no reason to raise, okay? So it's one, two, three, four, left hand drops, goes, right hand raises and snaps, all right? So, bam, two, three, four, bam, I'm sorry, track. I know it's in my head doing that. Track, two, three, four, track, two, three, four, track, two, three, four, okay? 
What if we dragged on the two? One drag. Add two drags in a row. This is now where our six would be up naturally because if I drag on one drag, the left hand has to immediately come up, upstroke, though it's not a, 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 a technical upstroke because I'm not hitting on two, I'm getting ready for two or the accent. Really, it's one motion again, though, so it's kind of the cobra. So it's a, this being the left, the left hand is going to drop, not raise, drop to get the two ghost notes in for one. So it's drop the left for the two ghost notes, then one comes in the wave like motion, snaps down. Now the left stick comes up. And the right stick came up, hit, was stopped here. So it's not a full, uh, a full stroke, it's a half stroke. So it's an accent that we have to stop here, right? So here, not come back up here, because the right stick is going to now be stopped here and drop to ghost note for the left stick, which has already started to raise and accent on two. So we have the, the slam, this guy now stays down here and drops, da, da, this guy does the cobra, bang, we have a drag there, then regular note three, regular note four, the left hand has played now the four, so it drops, does a ghost, the right hand Cobras, snaps, gets stopped, drops, goes, where the left hand now in one motion like a wave, snaps, right? There's your left hand drag, then regular note right, regular note left. What's it sound like? Slam, slam, three, sorry, drag. Sorry, guys. Drag, drag, three, four. So, what if we, let's say, change the sound, sound. Okay. a little deeper. So you can get up now, um, what if we want to do it on two and three, meaning flam on, sorry, I, I, guys, I'm really sorry, okay, my brain has complete ADD, so uh, I do this all the time. My students like go crazy, like, what do you mean, drag or flam? So just please bear with me. You get used to this. And these videos, you hear me do this all the time. Okay, I can barely remember my own phone number, trust me. Okay, so now, we're going to drag on the second note, then drag on the third note. Okay, so, regular right stroke, right? So it goes up and hits, not just go far, just hit, then it's going to drop, do our goes, left hand, it's going to raise and cobra. Then it stays down, right, don't bring it up, okay, so it bang, one full bang, then it's going to drop a ghost for the right hand to snap and uh, slash down, and then left hand, then the right hand, then the right hand drops, and we do the circuit again, so... system where we were doing using my double bass as a metronome looks like okay so so if we did if we did drags on the on beat not on the off beat so so one and two and three and four and right so we do drags like that one We did it on 
the offbeat, where we did a drag on the offbeat. So it would be one. Practicing more than right hand lead. Everything. More left hand lead practicing than right hand. We're just doing for the videos, purpose of demonstration, right hand lead, practice left hand lead more. And minimally 70% of the time to the metronome, but not all the time, you don't want to become totally reliant on a metronome. I've seen guys use a metronome so much that when they play without it, they're lost. Okay, so yes, it should be used about two thirds of the time. One third of the time, practice without it. Okay, when I do demos, I generally don't use it because I don't want this quick, quick, quick stuff going on, and I want you to feel this as well. Okay, now the drag. Okay, that's the fundamental of the drag. So um, you can put that in fours and threes, meaning one, two, three, four, or one, two, three. Okay, if it was done in threes, let's say on the one of threes. as well. Okay, so look for our videos on uh, going further into the flams and uh, visit our website please at mysicaljoining.com. Uh, please hit the like button. You can also join uh, here at YouTube and uh, we appreciate you watching. Always, okay, yeah, and have a beautiful day.